Namo Mirabutsu. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whenever you are, in whichever realms of existence you are, whatever mind state you're in, whatever conditions you're in, you are, as always, welcome to my channel. And welcome to the Kala Chakra time machine <laughs> the, uh, that will be traveling through time on this episode of the Lotus Pod. This is this is the time travel. Uh, this is the this is the time machine um, uh, component or 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 pod of the Lotus Pod. Anyway, uh, I thought it's sort of supposed to kind of be a uh you know the kala chakra in a way loosely the buddhist wheel in a way kind of as a time machine to travel through time and space of the of the uh of the uh maha kalpa and speaking of which before we return to discussing the maha kalpa and and start to go through the um through the um, evolution duration uh, time period uh, or Kalpa, medium Kalpa of the evolution, I wanted to go back and talk about time in general in Buddhism because I think it's important. Before we go any further with this, I should have done this first, but I didn't think of it. So um, for this episode, we're just going to go through some readings about time in Buddhism or referencing things about time in Buddhism and then how that's kind of um, how, the, how, you know, Buddhist teaching about time, the Buddhist teaching about time, all of those kinds of things in different ch traditions uh, teaching about just to get some context for these time periods of, you know, you have the Maha Kalpa, then you have the, you know, that's made up of four medium Kalpas and each medium Kalpa is made up of uh, uh, 20 um, small Kalpas and each of those small Kalpas is made up of 1000 regular Kalpas. So I just, I thought we should get, just to get an idea of the time scales and what we're looking at and, and the concept of time in Buddhism, I thought we should do some, uh, just take a step back and do some other, uh, go over some other things first. So that's what I'm going to do, uh, today. So first let me share my screen so you can follow along if you wish to. And then we'll go from there. Okay. So here we are. So we're going to, not going to, I don't think I'll start with the Kala Chakra because that gets a little bit complicated. Um, so I'm just going to talk first a little about, um, I think this is a good read. This is a good uh, article from the Tibetan Buddhist Library. Um, or not, sorry, Tibetan Buddhist uh, encyclopedia um, that just goes over time, just some general things about time in general from in, in Buddhism. So, so we'll go over that. We'll just read this first. So time, Kala, Sam, Samaya, or Vela. Just look at what that takes us to. Okay, now it just all comes back to time. So just different words for the same thing. Uh, time is a sense of duration apprehended by the phenomena of change. The ancient Indians used different systems of measuring and dividing time, but the most commonly used units were an instant or kana, a second, which is tataka, a minute, lava, an hour, aura, a day and night, ohurata, a week, sata, sataha, a fortnight, adamasa, a month, masa, a year, samvakara, and a century, vasasata. Uh, nights were divided into three watches, or yama. Um, that's interesting. I think it's called yama. Um, and so nights were divided into three watches and months into two fortnights. The duration of some of these units differed, sometimes greatly, 
from uh, from one system to another. A day was deemed to start at sunrise. Time is a sense of duration apprehended by the phenomena of change. Over the centuries, over the centuries, Buddhist Adhidharma philosophers developed several theories of time, some of them of considerable sophistication. However, while being intellectually interesting, few of these theories have any practical application. The Buddhist concept of time was purely common sense and was pure, was a purely common sense and practical one. He spoke of two types of time, chronological time and experiential time, which I think that's very important. Uh, chronological time can be known and measured by the regulated movement of an object. In ancient India, this was done by looking at the position of the sun or by measuring the movement of the sun's shadow with a kala, kalatamba or sundial, and in many other cultures as well, same thing. Uh, later, water clocks were invented, which could tell time on cloudy days and at night. Experiential time is felt through the ability to remember the past, be aware of the present, and speculate about the future all to do with consciousness, the mind stream, in our ignorance, um, how we perceive time. Uh, thus, in Buddhism, time is primarily a psychological phenomena, very important point. Thus, in Buddhism, time is primarily a psychological phenomena. Uh, phenomenon. It can be a problematic one, too. Indeed, uh, attachment to memories can lead to regret and guilt, um, very much so, uh, while speculation about the future can lead to worry, longing, fear, and useless uh, uh, fanatici fanaticizing, interesting, or fantasizing, maybe that was this meant to be, but fanaticizing also uh, fits there if you think about kind of uh, certain ideologies. Uh, most of them have some kind of future projection that there's going to be some kind of utopia, or if this religion, you know, these certain things will happen in this religion's thing, or in this ideology, these certain things will happen that will bring about a, you know, a, a universally peaceful, you know, political system that uh, in which everyone is equal and everyone will get their fair share, blah, 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 or whatever, you know, or, you know, that could be, that's more of a, you know, the left side of things or on the right hand side of things, you'll, you know, the right, the right side, you'll have, you know, there's libertarian um, fantasies and ideologies that fantasize about, you know, if, if, you know, if everyone had this, if certain things were set up in a certain way and everyone had certain kind of freedom, everyone was individual really responsible for themselves and blah, 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 then all these things would be the way it is, you know? Um, so anyway, uh, so fanaticizing, I think, <laughs> actually uh, fits there as well as fa fantasizing. Anyway, um, getting back, because I don't have a huge amount of time. Um, so, do, 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 do. Yeah, and both can be used as an escape from the present reality, indeed. On one occasion, let me move this so this isn't in the way of what we're reading. Um, on one occasion, the Buddha said, the past should not be followed and the future not desired, for what is in the past is dead and gone, and the future has not yet come. Instead, with insight, let him see the present moment the here and now. Let him know and be with that. Now, of course, for us ordinary beings, us unenlightened, ignorant, uh, spiritually evil beings, um, it's very difficult to do that, <laughs> to, to, to stay in and reflect on and be in the present moment, if not impossible, actually. Um, so, just a little bit of context there for us, Bamboo. Uh, so let him know and be with that. Let him know and be with that. But obviously, you know, that's what we should tr try to do as best we can in what within our karmic limitations. 
Um, speaking of the value of the living, speaking of the value of living in the present, he once said, uh, they do not lament over the past. They yearn not for what is yet to come, but maintain themselves in the present. And thus their uh, complexion is so serene. That would be very true if we could do that. Interesting, they do not lament the past or yearn for what's in, you know, kind of lamenting the past or yearning for what's in the future um, um, or fearing what's in the future. It's all, it's all to do with, with craving. It's all to do with aversion or attachment. Um, and that's all, be, and we see it that way. We, we, we look at time that way because of our ignorance. That's why we react to it that way. Anyway, and if we could just maintain ourselves in the present, like it says here, we, you know, we would have a complexion that is serene or an outlook or demeanor that is serene, but us ordinary beings just cannot do that. So one of the characteristics of Dhamma is that it is timeless, um, meaning that it is that it is as relevant and applicable now as it was when the Buddha taught it. So true, so true. It Dhamma is outside of time because it comes from the Buddha. It comes from the Buddha truth. It comes from the you know the truth of of the awakened truth, awakened reality. So it's of course it's outside of time. It's 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 timeless. It's not impacted by time, and it's the, it's true no matter when in our, you know, our diluted consciousness of time frames, you know, um, it's applied. It's always true. Um, the Buddha's intelligence and imagination was such that he was able to conceive of vast periods of time. One uh, he once said, and that's hence why we know what we can know about Buddhist cosmology and and the Mahakalpa and all of that uh, past period of time. He once said that the world came into being not in six days and just a few thousand years, as believed. Oh yeah, sorry. Okay, so. The Buddha's intelligence and imagination was such that he was able to conceive of vast periods of time. He once said that the world came into being not in six days and just a thousand, uh, a few thousand uh, years ago, as believed in Judeo Christian tradition. Well, I'd say more fundamentalist or literalist traditions, but over several eons. Um, and came into being it didn't there wasn't like a beginning <laughs> there isn't in the beginning in buddhism there isn't a you know there's a beginninglessness <laughs> that we can't completely conceive of as ordinary beings so when it says you know the the you, the, you know the world came into being it's been coming into being and going out of being on the most macrocosmic level and microcosmic level for since beginningless time. And, and, and trying to understand beyond that kind of gets into the kind of gets into the 14 unanswered questions that, but you know, the Buddhist Shakyamuni skillfully did refuse to answer. Um, because they would be unhelpful to us and be harmful probably for us in the hands or in the minds of, of us ordinary beings. So anyway, um, where were we? When asked how long an eon was, he replied, imagine a mountain of rock a mile long, a mile wide and a mile high, high without any cracks or crevices, just one solid mass. Then imagine that once every century, a man would stroke the, that mountain once with a 
silk with a piece of silk cloth. And I've heard other ways that was told where there was a, I think a, either a Dakini or a Deva or some celestial bird would come along and just swipe it with a feather on its way past in that context. So anyway, then imagine that once every century, a man would stroke the, that mountain once with a piece uh, of silk cloth that great mountain rock would have worn away before an eon had passed. So it's a very long time. <laughs> That's described like it's inconceivable. That's unimaginably long uh, period of time. Um, this is, of course, not meant to be a precise measurement, but only to give a sense of an unimaginable length of time. Over the centuries, Buddhist Adidama philosophers developed several theories of time, some of them of considerable sophistication, as I was saying earlier. However, while being intellectually interesting, few of these theories have been any uh, have any practical application. The Buddhist concept of time is oh. This seems to be oh well repeating itself a bit. Okay. So then it goes into some other things. So the Buddhist concept of time so it's just kind of saying, as it was being said earlier, this paragraph should have started with, as was said earlier. Okay. And uh, and as was also said earlier, the Buddhist concept of time was a purely common sense and practical one. He spoke of two time, two types of time, chronological and experiential time. Chronological time was known, can be known and measured in the regulated movement of an object. Now, this is repeating itself. Oh, for heaven's sake. Wow. Sorry. Um, yeah. All right. I'll just, sorry about this. I, you know, this, this is one of the, this is one of the issues with the Tibetan Buddhist Encyclopedia, the editing and the referencing is lacking. Although a lot of the entries in here mirror other like uh, Buddhist wikis or the or Wikipedia. So if you want the references, you can get them through, you know, just go go to the, you know, the wiki Wikipedia or the Buddhist or a Buddhist wiki to get the references about it. But sometimes the editing is not great. So I'm just going to so leave it there. So um yeah, because this just starts repeating itself. So I apologize for that. Right. So let's also talk about, um, I want to do use this time, the Kalpa time um, page of Wikipedia. Um, and uh, yeah, just go through this, hopefully in the remaining time I have. Uh, a Kalpa is a long period of time. Uh, in Hindu and Buddhist cosmology, generally between the creation and recreation of a world or universe. Kalpa, in Sanskrit, means a formation or creation. In this context, means a long period of time or eon, aeon, related to the lifetime of the universe. Uh, it is derived from... Uh, all of that kind of in the Sanskrit, um, and the the root I guess me you know breaks down to create, prepare, form, produce, compose, invent. So time in Buddhism is very much woven together with karma and formations, karma and manifestations, karma, time and manifestations, karma and time, and like it's all very you know, the, the, you know, a realm coming into being or a being being reborn, you know, born, um, you know, reborn, um, having a rebirth, that's all tied to time. It's all within time that that happens. And I think the, this, you know, the, 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 it was what, you know, that word Kalpa contains all of that, that it's like time, it's the formation, it's, you know, it kind of points toward all of that um, happening. Um, 